So here is a flowchart. We're given a flowchart. And we want to try and understand what the flowchart is doing for different sets of input values. And we will then use an IPO table to see what the output would be. And if you look at this flowchart, you'll see at the from start to input, it's sequential, from input to here. And then suddenly, it's no longer sequential. I'm making decisions. Here's my condition. And if the condition is false, I'm going in one direction. And when the condition is true, I'm going in a different direction. So it's no, this is no, no longer considered sequential, where every statement is executed one after the other. So let's first look at the situation when num equals five. So this is, this is what we're going to do, num equals five. So at this box, input num, num now has the value five. We're testing it for this input. Let's see what output we're going to get in this case. So num is five. So here, we're going to check the process. The process here is num greater than 10. Num greater than 10. And if num is five, then that's going to be is five greater than is five greater than 10. If you evaluate this condition, this evaluates to false. Five is not greater than 10. So it evaluates to false. So here, my condition evaluates to false. I've got two branches. This is true and this is false. So because my condition evaluated to false, I follow the branch that says false. And that brings me to this point here. And I then continue following, I continue following the flowchart. From here, I then go to output, hello. So my output is going to be the message, hello. So when the number was five, what did this flowchart do? It just displayed, it printed, hello. That's what it did. Let's now test the same flowchart for a different input. So let's start all over again, but this time round, let's take num to be 15. So we're using a different input value for the same flowchart. And let's see what happens this time. So my input is done. Num is 15. Is num greater than 10? That's my condition. I should be here. Is num greater than 10? I'm working with num 15. Is 15 greater than 10? That is true. 15 is greater than 10. So this time around, I follow the true, the pathway that takes me, that tells me which is true. So now, this is an output box. I really should have had, because it's an output, I should have had output there. So output number greater than 10. So that's output. So it's going to say number greater than 10. That's going to come from here. When it, the condition is true, it's printing number greater than 10. And then follow the arrows, and then it's going to output hello. So this outputs two statements. It's going to tell me when I input 15, it's going to tell me number greater than 10, and it's going to tell me hello. But when I input five, when my input was five, it only output hello. That's just the way the flowchart is behaving. Let's now look at the third set of input. What happens when num equals 10? So I have my input num and I've got 10. Let's go to the process. My process is num greater than 10. My value for num is 10. So is 10 greater than 10? Is 10 
bigger than 10? False. 10 is not bigger than, bigger than 10. 10 is equal to 10. So that condition is false. So because the condition is false, I now need to follow the false branch, which takes me there and finally takes me here. And I then need to output hello. And then finally I stop. So as you can see, this flowchart, if the number, if you look at the first and the third, uh, the first uh, num equals five and num equals 10, if we look at those two um, outputs that we got, it was only hello. And what do we notice in those instances? We notice that the numbers were less than 10. So if you input any number less than 10, the condition is going to be false and it's only going to print hello. But if you input a number that's greater than 10, something like 15, if it's greater than 10, then your condition is true. This condition now becomes true. And then it's going to print number greater than 10, and it's going to print hello, as it did here. This is just an example of a flowchart. Why, you may be thinking, but why is it doing what it is doing? Well, it's just an example that I made up. And based on the flowchart that you are given, you would sometimes need to be able to determine what the output is doing. And let's assume that this message, instead of saying greater, we said less than 10. What this would be doing is it would then be saying for the number 15, it would be saying number less than 10. Now we know that it's not true. If you enter 15, then it should not tell me the number is less than 10. So this is how you can pick up your mistakes. When I've got a number like 15, why is it telling me number less than 10 when it really should be telling me number is greater than 10? Uh, that's the power of using an IPO table. Effectively, you can determine your mistakes. I just added a statement, don't worry too much about, it's just saying hello. I just added a statement there just to, for you to see how you trace a flowchart and the output that you will get for this given flowchart. So let's look at another example to better understand what we are doing. The flowchart, if you look at it, it's very similar. We have one additional box here. So this time round, we now have, remember, this should have had an output or a print similarly here because that is output. So that's a mistake on my side. I omitted the output or print statements. When you're writing your flowcharts, you should have them in. Now we can go a bit faster with this flowchart to see exactly what it's doing. So for the first set of input value, input num, num is five. So from there, we then go and test our condition. Is five greater than 10? Is five greater than 10? Now that is false. Five is not greater than 10. So if it's false, you follow the branch that is false, and you're going to output number not greater than 10. Number not greater than 10, because that's what it's telling us. I continue the branches and it's then gonna tell me, hello. And then it stops, so it reaches the end. So that would be the input for num equals five. Now let's look at if num equals 15. So here we have a value of 15 for num. So let's test, is 15 greater than 10? Is 15 greater than 10? True, that is true. So follow the branch that takes you to true, that's there. 
and it's going to output number greater than 10. Number greater than 10. And from that point, it's then going to go to the next box and it's going to print hello. And finally, it goes to the end, which is your stop. The third, uh, the third uh, value that we are testing is num equals 10. So let's assume here input num, the value of num is 10. Let's test our condition. Is 10 greater than 10? 10 is not greater than 10, that's false. It's not greater than 10. So we follow the branch that says false and it's going to output number not greater, greater than 10. This should, there's a spelling error here. It should be than, T-H-A-N, not then in both cases. The number not greater than 10. And if we continue following, it's then going to output. Hello. So given this flowchart, this is the output you could, you should get. Now, if in a test, you, you were given a flowchart and the messages were swapped around, let's assume these messages were swapped around. So here, when you input five, the output is going to say the number is greater than 10. And when you input 15, it's going to say the number is less than 10. If the output in the flowchart is incorrect, then your output should be the incorrect values. Do not try to reason it out and say, but it should be the other way around. And you write your output the way you think it should be. The purpose of the flowchart is for you to follow the flowchart as it is, not for you to start making changes to the flowchart. If you are given the flowchart, if you draw the flowchart yourself and you know you're getting the incorrect values based on your IPO table, then you can go and correct it so that you know it's giving you the right output. But in a test, if they give you the values that are incorrect, then you need to do the IPO table based on the invalid output that you're going to get. So just keep that at the back of your mind. So this is just how flowcharts work. It's a graphical representation of how you break down the steps of a problem and you represent it using these symbols and it just helps you to logically understand how to go about solving a, a particular problem. I hope this helps you uh, in better understanding how to make use of a flowchart.